YouTube. Um, yeah, so this is the Yamaha RBX base I got ages ago. Um, it turns out the neck was burst. The body was all split and I put screws in it and stuff and then patched it up and painted it, hung it in the garage for ages, painted it again. Wasn't happy with the results. And then when JPAC started doing her painting thing, the second day I went over, I took over, picked up a couple of things that were lying about. I, I just before in case you got bored and didn't paint anymore because um, I was real impressed with the first one so this one got painted now this is like a really really early number JPEGs I've just yesterday last night put a, a neck on it now I'm trying to put the the electrics back in again this is active um, and it was I'm trying to remember was it in here no I think it was in the last house I think it was maybe four years ago I snipped all the wires from this um I have no idea what anything's going on, so I'm just kind of looking at it and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to work out what I'm doing. I think this one here, right, there's three um, centre indent pots. This one, because of what I've left here, I hope you can see this, these two white wires that I've snipped, I didn't unsolder them, I snipped them so there was a chance I would know what was going back on again. So I think what this is is a blend pot, because if you look at the end of the pickups, I've already kind of started going around and trimming these. Um... So there's, there's coming out of that hole would be the bridge pickup. Coming out of that hole is going to be the neck pickup. There's white wires, two white wires. To me, double rail thing me looks like a blind pot. Um, this one is, I'm going to assume there's nothing, there's nothing new connected to it. Why does that keep falling off? Um, oh, it's a QC eighty three. I could probably look that up and find out what it is. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's some sort of. Um, either bass or treble because it's active this one with the circuit board on it will be whatever it's either bass or treble again and this one here i'm pretty sure is a volume control because i kind of recognize what it's doing so this red wire here is very likely the battery i don't have the battery terminal but i did buy a packet of these a while ago i was actually going to hollow that out because i've got like a proper battery box for it and then it's like actually it's much easier just to cut out a bit of plastic and stick it on but that's assuming it's all going to work anyway. So, current plan is also three green earth wires. Going to assume I don't really need them. I'm actually wondering, just with the length of that, I wonder, I think that might actually be meant to go in below that pickup. It might be shielded behind it, but um, I can do that later if there's an issue. That, see, that, that one there's not long enough to reach a pickup, or is it maybe? I don't know. I can't be bothered. I'll search that later. I'm probably actually just going to snip them off to get them out of the way. Um, I could always run manual earths if it comes to it. So I'm going to connect these two pickups to the blend pot, the red wire to the red to the red wire to the battery. There. Um, I'm going to. I'm not sure these are all in the right order. Um, but it doesn't really matter. So this is this is one of those horrible barrel jacks. It's a stereo jack. So what it does is um, there will be that one there has a wee bit of black on it. So I'm thinking that's most likely this bridge earth. And I'd imagine that is the switched earth because what it does in a stereo jack, obviously, you know, you get your tip and your ring. I do have you know, like, a, like a stereo cable. Got... Ah, just looking at my legs. Right. I'll, I'll utilize a fresh piece of tape to hold that thing on. I do need... I'm sure there's a green roll of tape sitting here somewhere. Where is it? Yeah, bugar. Right, two seconds while I go and find some insulating tape. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, so being super, super, super technical, um, the camera, which is the one I normally use, which is up there, is um, is insulating taped onto this light thing, which is pointing down. So you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, I needed tape anyway. I'm using green tape because I don't have a green line in the Skelextrix set. Mm -hmm. But I do have a yellow, a blue, a red and a black. So that's why I bought the a brand new packet of insulating tape. So green's the one that I've been using from now on. So I'll be taping that onto that. Right, okay. I'm going to leave... See, that one I don't actually have to do anything with at all because I don't think there's anything soldered to it. This pot's actually broken and I am... 
because I don't even know if it's going to work, I drilled a hole and sort of super glued a, a screw in there, so I might be able to just, you know, put epoxy in the inside of a knob and stick it on it, but I'm pretty sure that, that one's going to go in there, so I don't need to touch that. That just runs off the circuit board. If I just poke that in there and leave it, I think that might be where it's meant to be, but I'm not 100% sure. That one's not coming out again. Um, I'm just putting the knob on the bottom, the wee bolt on the bottom. Just making sure this, this stuff works. Right, that's uh, not coming out again either. I've already looked at that. There's nothing on. There's nothing on that that's I've, I've cut off. So that's like a preamp and shizzle. So I'm just going to put. I'll just. That's the, right. I'll just stick that on as well. Just get to it. So it's not moving. So what I'm going to do now is connect up the blend pot and the red wires, and then. The output jack goes to the stereo thing, which I was talking about there with the stereo. Yeah, so what the stereo does is, before I drop the cable, so if you look at your headphones, you know, a stereo's got two, that's a, the tip, and that's the ring. If not, sometimes you get like two wee black bars, so there's actually three bits. That's what a stereo run would be. If I had a stereo thing kicking about, I don't have one line about. Um, so what this does is, this terminal here, you put to the negative of the battery like what would be the the, the third terminal goes to the negative of the battery and then the other terminal goes to the, the all the other f's go to this that means that when you plug this in because the two the two terminals one that isn't there get joined together it turns the battery on that means that when you're not using the when you don't have a something plugged in the battery's disconnected and it, it won't run dry so that's what this is it will still work if you used it in a mono one it just means that every time it would just be on until the battery went flat there's nothing you could do about it whereas this one if you plug it in you know if, it, if i just stuck that in there when it's working even if it's not plugged into an amp in that you're connecting the battery into the circuit so the circuit is powered so don't you know that's not what you want right so I'll turn on the, my soldier iron and start poking about with this stuff i've got a fair amount of uh tinning things to do I'm kind of doing this video because just to, I mean, it's like the, the way to do these things is no fear. I have no idea what's going on in here. I'm just guessing. I've never wired up a a Yamaha RBX base circuit before. Um, I the, the problem with this is I'm not actually sure it works. I'm not sure it worked when I got it to be. The guy said it did still work surprisingly considering it was all smashed up. So I think it, I'm pretty sure it's going to work. Um, in some regard, there's not that much in it, you know. It's just kind of the same circuitry. The actual active bit just means all you're doing is you need a 9 volt battery to run the pickups. And that circuit board is full of capacitors and stuff like that. But I mean, that would be like a wee, a wee boost preampy type thing. I don't even know. I'd be interested to see what the knobs do at the end. I'm, I'm, I'm reckoning I've got a, well, I think I'm pretty sure that's about a blend pot between the two pickups. And I'm pretty sure this will just be bass and treble. Or boost and tone. Or... Not much, yeah. And that's that's really all the wires done. And I'll put the, the negative from there goes onto the extra terminal there. Yeah, so I'll connect this air first, just because I can. Because I'm pretty sure that that is the standard air. Um, let me bend that out a wee bit, just to make things easier. So looking at this, I am going to go for that being the actual main earth focus in focus in focus in bastard yeah that this bit here you can see there's just that this this would be the main earth and this one here is the no it can't be can it that must be the hot How do I work this out? I'm going to tin all the wires while I think about it anyway. Tinning's when you put solder on the wire. Yeah, just to, so it sticks. So, the vastly super exciting bit of me putting solder on the end of all these wires. To be honest, it doesn't actually really matter whether the, the, the thing from the air, the air from the bridge goes on to the, the black battery terminal anyway because you, you don't you it doesn't it doesn't need to be you know you know there's no point in connecting up 
that's quite a big bit. Uh, all airs can touch each other. That's fine. Um, in normal wiring. Doesn't necessarily work in some of the guitars I've wired. Ones with phases in them and series things. All theirs can't touch each other because they're not really grounds anymore, even though they look like they should be. Um, and the battery terminals. Some of the wires they use are just very, very thin. I like using thick wires so you get a bit more to look at. Obviously they're better as well. The difference is if you buy a big mask, you can get, you know, in, in the economies of scale, if you're making a thousand guitars, you can save 50 quid using really, really thin wire. So, I mean, it's 50 quid, yeah. It, it saves money, so it saves money. Right, I'm, I'm just going to put that onto that, because that's... So there's main earth from the bridge is going on to what I'm just going to totally assume is the main earth for the this barrel jack. In fact, actually, that, that looks very much like the bit of wire I just took off. Yeah, okay. I'm pr I'm, mm, no, I'll go for look, high 80s. 80, high 80s percent sure that that's where that's meant to go. Something like that. Um, now, this one... Uh, am I going to check it with a... Make me how well... So I'm sticking this in this wee jumper lead in here just to make sure that the which one is the the hot terminal. I am I'll go for what eighty percent sure again ninety percent. I'm pretty sure that that one there is the hot terminal. So when I put that on there, it should be nothing. Yes, whereas if I put it on to the earth, the ground. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing there. To, to find out which is which, I've plugged it in, so I'm just holding the, one of the wires onto the the tip, and then this one onto that one there. So that's the output. So that's where this white wire goes, and that black one goes to there, and the battery is going to that other one. As I said, no idea what I'm doing. Should be fun. Part of the joys of the guitar. I don't know the fun. I don't know if there'd be as much fun in it if, if, if you know if you know if you know exactly what you're doing. It's not the same. So it's venturing into the unknown, being a pioneer. Think of me as uh, what's that Leonardo DiCaprio on it? got from the the uh, the Revenant. Think of that. You know, out where no one's ever been before. Native Americans trying to kill you, bears attacking you. I'm 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 that guy in guitar wiring. In the guitar wiring world. Although this has been done before. I'm not I'm not exactly doing anything new here. It's more fun venturing into the unknown when you have a crazy idea. I'm not sure whether this bass is keeping these pickups in it either. Um kinda depends. I don't really know what to do with the bass. It's not it's not the sort of pretty guitar that I normally really like. I don't really like the look of it. Um yeah, this this one's coming out and I'm gonna and I'm going to go for the 50-50 rule here. I've got a 50% chance of getting these pickups the right way around, which way the blend goes. But I don't think it really matters whether it's forward to the neck pickup or whatever. So they go to the two terminal, two centre terminals, and the earths go to... I don't know where they originally went. They probably originally went on the back of this pot. I think I might just put them on. That's very obviously an earth there. That one there, you can if you follow that, see that black wire, you can see it covered from there, joining onto that terminal, jumping over, joining onto that terminal, then going onto the back of the pot. So that's an earth. So all earths are the same. So it doesn't really matter which one I put it onto. I could probably work out which way this is meant to go, right? So if I'm turning that all the way forward, it's got to be the neck pickup. So which which way is that way? So that way 
puts that one there to full and that one that way excuse me while I bend my head around how this works it's, it's, it's a 50-50 chance but I can make it I can increase those odds to maybe 75-25 if I can if I think I'm doing this the right way around to return it that way it puts this one to fill that's the neck so the bridge is the bottom one it's very long is this is this, this bottom See, what, what, what I did there was I just said it really confidently, so when it, at the end, when it, when, it, when, it, when, it, when it turns out to be right, it's like, yeah, I told you that was what was going to happen. I really know. It doesn't really matter. Make any difference, really. I'm going to swap the two wires about. It's a really difficult, little bitchy bit to get at that one, isn't it? Not so much getting the wiring, getting the soldering iron in without melting everything else around it. Going for that being the bridge, and then this one being the neck. My, why is my stomach rumbling? I've just eaten. I don't know. It's craziness. Right, so, I mean, I could just stick one to there, because I know that's definitely air. Um, I might snip a bit off that. That seems a bit, seems a bit excessively long. The more what, it, bits of wire you have hanging about un, unexposed or exposed, the more chances of something shortening out, shortening out, so I'll just turn that wire, I bet, I bet, I think that would probably be attached to the back of the, the volume pot, but I know better than Yamaha's expert division, one, and then the air for this one just goes on it as well. It's also possible I might be able to break out these pickups and coil spot them. I don't know whether that's really that much use though. I don't even know what they sound like. I'm sure that, I definitely remember the guy who, who, who didn't sell me the base. He actually gave me it. It's the guy I got my um, Aria Pro 2 off. He was selling my ZZB base, the one I had when I was, I don't know how much old well, I must have been, what, 19 or something like that. I had it for six months, loved it, but being a turquoise burst 80s super pointy bass worked great my first band when we were doing original stuff because it was funny and then we started doing Beatles and Stone songs and I was playing a, a turquoise explorer bass which just didn't seem right um so I traded it in like an absolute idiot for an Epiphone EBO part of one of the reasons I'm just not such a fan of Epiphone EBOs apart from the fact they're rubbish um and it was never as good a bass obviously, and then I tried to find one for years, and then literally 20 years later, which was actually the same night that um, there was an Anderton's video where they were trying to find the same model of the original guitar they had, and it was like you saw Chapman in tears when he was looking at his banana yellow Yamaha and stuff like that, and I was like, oh, it's... I remember my Aria Pro. I need to find some videos from before I got it back, me, with me talking about it, because I'd mentioned it a few times, going up, you know... Always be very sure that when you're selling something that you definitely want to sell it. I used to have this amazing turquoise Aria Pro 2 ZZ bass and oh, it was amazing. And I wish I hadn't sold it and I didn't get very much money for it and I'd never find another one. I kept looking and they were, the prices were creeping up the whole time. They were getting up to, skip seeing them for three, four hundred quid, but never saw one with a maple neck like the one I had until that, literally that very night. So if you look up that, that Anderton's video, you'll find the exact date. And then it was, I was just looking on um, Facebook Marketplace, and there it was. Maple Neck, that ZZB, 150 quid. Right, and then I had the immortal words. Yes, there's there's some extra holes on the on the bottom of it, which I can't really explain, that have been drilled into it. It was like, that'll be when I had a, like a stand thing that I screwed onto it so you could lean it against the wall. So it was my base. Not the same model, not the same... Not the same colour, the same one. That's that's um that's short now. There, I need to get that off. The clean now has. Um, same one in tears, and the guy was also selling a, a battered uh, Yamaha. This one, which was silver, 
um, that he'd, like he'd smashed it up on stage. And uh, I, I was—I think he was expecting me to haggle for the, the bass, and it was like I'm dead, 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 money. I was in tears. I think the guy was quite quite amused by my reaction to it. I wasn't really expecting that reaction. I think that's it. I think I've just connected up the bass. I don't think I need any of these earths. I think they're just tch. What do you need earth for? Uh, do I have a, a nine volt battery? I do. Do I have one that works? <laughs> yes. All right. That black wires maybe a little bit. Oh, no, I'll be all right. I think. Be enough to see if it works. I'm not going that way. I'm not going sideways. Yeah, so that that's that's getting a bit of foam and a bit of plastic cutting up. These earth wires, if I don't need them, are just getting chopped off. It's getting plugged into the bass amp. Is it on? It will be in a second. On. On. Lead in. What happens when I plug it in? Nothing as yet, but let's see. Oh, I hear, I hear something. Looks like that is the volume. Right, this is the one I thought might be the... Yeah, so that's... Um, Some sort of tone thing. This is some sort of boosty thing. And this is the one here I thought might be the bridge pickup. Neck pickup. Neck. Nothing. Bridge. Yep. Nothing. No, I didn't say it was going to be in tune, but there you go. So the Yamaha bass is now working. What did that take? 20, 20 minutes is a bit. I think that included trying to find insulating tape and talking to you lot. Um, I think, to be honest, actually, that was quite a wee bit therapeutic for me, having you guys on, because it just meant that um, I wasn't really thinking about it, <laughs> rather than sitting there, oh, I have no idea what I'm doing, what's going on. So it works. Um, I'm going to take off these green earth wires for now. I can put them back on again later on. If I ever take, well, when the guitar gets taken back to bits again, I'll put them in. I'm pretty sure it's just going to be shielding that goes into the cavities. Um, because they've got wee uh, screw holes on the back, which I, so I think there might be wee screws holding them into the shielding in the cavities, but I'm going to assume that I don't really need them very much. Uh, I'm going to now going to go and see if I can find this back plate, which I'm pretty sure I've got. I, it's possible I've even got that back plate. Um, I don't think so, though. I think that's going to be a case of cutting up one of the, uh, you know, one of your strap back plates that I always forget to put back on straps and just stick it on four screws. That's it. Yeah, so, rock a doodle. Expect a video very shortly of me playing this bass with two back plates on it. I'm not going to bother showing you putting the back plates on or trying to find the back plates. Um, yeah, this bass looks phenomenal. I'm kind of... It's been a bit of a thorn in my side, to be honest, because I've had it for so long, and then I got it back when JPAX painted it, and then I was like, oh, i got to try and rewire it, and I put the neck on it, and the truck, I couldn't get the, the neck to sit level. And I was like trying to adjust the truss rod, try to tighten it up. I was like, I just, it was just a banana. And I was like, right, okay, so I put lots of wash, took the bits, took, I'll put lots of washers on the back of the truss rod, managed to get the fit, screwed it back up again. Just got it better, but not good enough. Then I tried putting the bass neck in the oven, uh, which is really annoying. Guitar necks kind of, sort of, two-thirds fit in an oven. A bass neck only half fits in the oven. In the oven, heated it up, got it so it was like pure blah, blah, blah. Had it out in the garage, clamped it, tightened up the truss rod, got it kind of, got it straight, basically. And then as soon as I put any pressure on it, there was that up bow again. And then I was like, right, just turned the truss rod and snapped it. So for that point... If I just snapped the truss rod at the start, it would have been fine. So this is actually a stag neck um, from a that's been in my garage for about twenty years. It seems to work. So rocking. I'll see you soon. If anyone's after a Yamaha RBX four seventy, I might actually peel the sticker that says RBX four seventy off the back of that and stick it onto this, even though it's very obviously a stag neck. The stag necks are good though. Rock on.